In mathematics, a set B of elements vectors in a vector space V is called a basis, if every element of V may be written in a unique way as a finite linear combination of elements of B the coefficients of this linear combination are referred to as components or coordinates on B of the vector. The elements of a basis are called basis vectors. Equivalently B is a basis if its elements are linearly independent and every element of V is a linear combination of elements of B in more general terms, a basis is a linearly independent spanning set. A vector space can have generally several bases, however all the bases have the same number of elements, called the dimension of the vector space. Definition A basis B of a vector space V over a field F such as the real numbers R or the complex numbers C is a linearly independent subset of V that spans V. This means that, a subset B of V is a basis if it satisfies the two following conditions. The linear independence property, for every finite subset B1 Bn of B and every A1 and in F, if A1 B1 plus plus A N B N Topic zero, then necessarily a one. Topic N zero, the spanning property for every vector v in v, it is possible to choose v one, v n in f and b one. Bn in B such that V equals V1 B1 plus plus V n B n. The scalars V are called the coordinates of the vector V with respect to the basis B, and by the first property they are uniquely determined. A vector space that has a finite basis is called finite dimensional. In this case, the subset B1 Bn that is considered twice in the above definition may be chosen as B itself. It is often convenient to ordering the basis vectors, typically when one consider the coefficients of a vector on a basis, without referring explicitly to the basis elements. In this case, the ordering is necessary for associating each coefficient to the corresponding basis element. Generally, this ordering is implicitly done by numbering the basis elements. For example, when using matrices, the ith row, and ith column refer to the ith element of a basis of some vector space. For emphasizing that an order has been chosen, one speaks of an ordered basis, which is therefore a sequence rather than a set. See ordered bases and coordinates below. Topic: <laughs> Examples. The set R2 of the ordered pairs of real numbers is a vector space for the component-wise addition a b plus C D equals a plus C B plus D display style a B plus C D equals a plus C B plus D and scalar multiplication lambda a B equals lambda a lambda B display style lambda a b equals lambda a lambda b, where lambda display style lambda is any real number. A simple basis of this vector space, called the standard basis, consists of the two vectors e one. Topic one zero and e two. 0, 1, since, any vector V equals A, B of R2 may be uniquely written as V equals A E 1 plus B E 2 display style V equals A underscore 1 plus B underscore 2 any other pair of linearly independent vectors of R2, such as 1, 1 and minus 1, 2, forms also a basis of R2. More generally, if F is a field, the set F n 
of n tuples of elements of f is a vector space for similarly defined addition and scalar multiplication. Let e i equals 0 0 1 0 0 Display style e underscore i equals zero l dots zero one zero l dots zero. Be the n tuple with all components equal to zero except the i t h, which is one. Then e one e n display style e underscore one l dots e underscore n is a basis of f n. Display style f caret n, which is called the standard basis of f n. Display style f caret n. If f is a field, the polynomial ring f x of the polynomials in one indeterminate has a basis b, called the monomial basis, consisting of all monomials b equals one x x two. Display style b equals one x x caret two l dots. Any set of polynomials such that there is exactly one polynomial of each degree is also a basis. Such a set of polynomials is called a polynomial sequence. Example among many of such polynomial sequences are Bernstein basis polynomials and Chebyshev polynomials. Topic properties. Many properties of finite bases result from the Steinitz exchange lemma, which states that, given a finite spanning set S and a linearly independent subset L of n elements of S, one may replace n well-chosen elements of S by the elements of L for getting a spanning set containing L, having its other elements in S, and having the same number of elements as S. Most properties resulting from Steinitz exchange lemma remain true when there is no finite spanning set, but their proof in the infinite case requires generally the axiom of choice or a weaker form of it, such as the ultrafilter lemma. If V is a vector space over a field F, then if L is a linearly independent subset of a spanning set S V, then there is a basis B such that L B S Display style L subsetec B subsetec S V has a basis. This is the preceding property with L being the empty set and S equals V. All bases of V have the same cardinality, which is called the dimension of V. This is the dimension theorem. A generating set S is a basis of V if and only if it is minimal. That is, no proper subset of S is also a generating set of V. A linearly independent set L is a basis if and only if it is maximal, that is, it is not proper subset of any linearly independent set, if V is a vector space of dimension n, then a subset of V with n elements is a basis if and only if it is linearly independent. A subset of V with n elements is a basis if and only if it is spanning set of V. Coordinates. <coughs> <coughs> Let V be a vector space of finite dimension n over a field F, and B equals B one B N Display style B equals B underscore one L dots B underscore N be a basis of V by definition of a basis, for every V in V may be written, in a unique way. V equals Lambda one B one plus plus lambda n b n display style v equals lambda underscore one b underscore one plus c d o t s plus lambda underscore n b underscore n, where the coefficients lambda one lambda n Display style lambda underscore one l dots lambda underscore n are scalars, that is, elements of f, which are called the coordinates of v over b. However, if one talks of the set of the coefficients, one loses the correspondence between coefficients and basis elements, and several vectors may have the same set of coefficients. For example, three b one plus 
2 b 2 display style 3 b underscore 1 plus 2 b underscore 2 and 2 b 1 plus 3 b 2 Display style 2b underscore 1 plus 3b underscore 2 have the same set of coefficients 2, 3, and are different. It is therefore often convenient to work with an ordered basis. This is typically done by indexing the basis elements by the first natural numbers. Then, the coordinates of a vector form a sequence similarly indexed, and a vector is completely characterized by the sequence of coordinates. An ordered basis is also called a frame, a word commonly used, in various contexts, for referring to a sequence of data allowing defining coordinates. Let, as usual, f n be the set of the n-tuples of elements of f. This set is an f-vector space, with addition and scalar multiplication defined component-wise. The map phi lambda 1 Lambda N Lambda one B one plus plus Lambda N B N Display style Varfi sad face, Lambda underscore one, L dots, Lambda underscore N, Mapsto, Lambda underscore one, B underscore one plus C D O T S plus Lambda underscore N, B underscore N is a linear isomorphism from the vector space f n display style f caret n onto v in other words f n display style f caret n is the coordinate space of v and the n tuple phi minus 1 v display style var phi caret minus 1 v is the coordinate vector of v the inverse image by phi display style var phi of b i display style b underscore i is the n tuple e i display style e underscore i whose all components are zero except the ith that is one the e i Display style e underscore i form an ordered basis of f n display style f caret n, which is called its standard basis or canonical basis. The ordered basis b is the image by phi display style var phi of the canonical basis of f n display style f caret n. It follows from what precedes that every ordered basis is the image by a linear isomorphism of the canonical basis of f n display style f caret n and that every linear isomorphism from f n display style f caret n onto v may be defined as the isomorphism that maps the canonical basis of f n display style f caret n Onto a given ordered basis of V, in other words, it is equivalent to define an ordered basis of V, or a linear isomorphism from F N style F caret N onto V. Topic <laughs> Change of basis. Let V be a vector space of dimension N over a field F given two ordered bases. B O equals V one V N display style B underscore O equals V underscore one L dots V underscore N and B N equals W one W N Display style b underscore n equals w underscore one l dots w underscore n a v. It is often useful to express the coordinates of a vector x with respect to b o. Display style b underscore o 
in terms of the coordinates with respect to b n display style b underscore n this can be done by the change of base formula is described below the subscripts o and n have been chosen because it is customary to refer to b o display style b underscore o as the old basis and to b n display style b underscore n as the new basis it is useful to describe the old coordinates in terms of the new ones, because in general one has an expression, in which the old coordinates are to be substituted by these terms in the new coordinates, thus yielding an equivalent expression, involving the new coordinates, instead of the old ones. Typically, the new basis vectors are given by their coordinates over the old basis, that is W J equals I equals 1 n a i j v i display style w underscore j equals sum underscore i equals 1 caret n a underscore i j v underscore i if x 1 x n display style x underscore 1 l dots x underscore n and y 1 y n display style y underscore 1 l dots y underscore n are the coordinates of a vector v over the old and the new basis respectively one has v equals j equals 1 n y j w J equals J equals one N Y J I equals one N A I J V I equals I equals one N J equals one N A I J Y J V I equals I equals one N X I V I display style begin aligned V and equals sum underscore J equals one carrot N Y underscore J W underscore J and equals sum underscore J equals one carrot N Y underscore J sum underscore I equals one carrot N A underscore I J V underscore I and equals sum underscore I equals one carrot N left sum underscore J equals one carrot N A underscore I J Y underscore J right V underscore I and equals sum underscore I equals one carrot n x underscore I v underscore I end aligned the formula for changing the coordinates with respect to the other basis results from the uniqueness of the decomposition of a vector over a basis and is thus x i equals j equals one n a i j y j display style x underscore I equals sum underscore j equals one carrot n a underscore I j y underscore j for i equals one n this formula may be concisely written in matrix notation. Let A be the matrix of the A I J display style underscore I J and X equals X one X N display style X equals begin P matrix X underscore 1 V D O T S X underscore n and P matrix quad and y equals y 1 y n display style quad y equals begin P matrix y underscore 1 V D O T S y underscore n and P matrix be the column vectors of the coordinates of v in the old and the new basis respectively, then the formula for changing coordinates is x equals a 
y display style x equals i topic related notions topic free module If one replaces the field occurring in the definition of a vector space by a ring, one gets the definition of a module. For modules, linear independence and spanning sets are defined exactly as for vector spaces, although generating set is more commonly used than that of spanning set. Like for vector spaces, a basis of a module is a linearly independent subset that is also a generating set. A major difference with the theory of vector spaces is that not every module has a basis. A module that has a basis is called a free module. Free modules play a fundamental role in module theory, as they may be used for describing the structure of non-free modules through free resolutions. A module over the integers is exactly the same thing as an abelian group. Thus a free module over the integers is also a free abelian group. Free abelian groups have specific properties that are not shared by modules over other rings. Specifically, every subgroup of a free abelian group is a group, and, if G is a subgroup of a finitely generated free abelian group H that is an abelian group that has a finite basis, there is a basis E 1 E n display style E underscore 1, L dots, E underscore n of h and an integer 0 k n such that a 1 e 1 a k e k display style underscore 1 e underscore 1 l dots a underscore k e underscore k is a basis of g for some non-zero integers a 1 a k Display style a underscore one l dots a underscore k. For details, see free abelian group section subgroups. Topic analysis. In the context of infinite dimensional vector spaces over the real or complex numbers, the term Hamel basis, named after Georg Hamel, or algebraic basis, can be used to refer to a basis as defined in this article. This is to make a distinction with other notions of basis that exist when infinite dimensional vector spaces are endowed with extra structure. The most important alternatives are orthogonal bases on Hilbert spaces, Schauder bases, and Markushevich bases on normed linear spaces. In the case of the real numbers R viewed as a vector space over the field Q of rational numbers, Hamel bases are uncountable, and have specifically the cardinality of the continuum, which is the cardinal number. 0 display style 2 caret aleph underscore 0 where 0 display style aleph underscore 0 is the smallest infinite cardinal the cardinal of the integers the common feature of the other notions is that they permit the taking of infinite linear combinations of the basis vectors in order to generate the space this, of course, requires that infinite sums are meaningfully defined on these spaces, as is the case for topological vector spaces, a large class of vector spaces including e.g. Hilbert spaces, Banach spaces, or Frechet spaces. The preference of other types of bases for infinite dimensional spaces is justified by the fact that the Hamel basis becomes too big. In Banach spaces, if X is an infinite dimensional normed vector space which is complete i.e. X is a Banach space, then any Hamel basis of X is necessarily uncountable. This is a consequence of the bare category theorem. The completeness as well as infinite dimension are crucial assumptions in the previous claim. Indeed, finite dimensional spaces have by definition finite bases and there are infinite dimensional non-complete normed spaces which have countable Hamel bases. Consider C O O display style C underscore O O the space of the sequences X equals X n display style X equals X underscore n of real numbers which have only finitely many non-zero elements with the norm X equals sub n X 
n display style x equals sup underscore n x underscore n its standard basis consisting of the sequences having only one non-zero element which is equal to 1 is a countable hamel basis Topic example in the study of Fourier series, one learns that the functions 1 sin nx, cos nx, n equals 1, 2, 3, are an orthogonal basis of the real or complex vector space of all real or complex valued functions on the interval 0, 2 pi that are square integrable on this interval, i.e., functions f satisfying O2 pi, f x, 2 dx infinity, display style int underscore 0, carrot 2 pi left, f x right, carrot 2, dx the function Functions 1 sin nx cos nx n equals 1 2 3 are linearly independent, and every function f that is square integrable on 0 2 pi is an infinite linear combination of them, in the sense that lim n infinity 0 2 pi a 0 plus k equals 1 n a k cos k x plus b k sin k x minus f x 2 d x equals 0 Display style lim underscore n right arrow in a t int underscore zero carrot two pi bigle a underscore zero plus sum underscore k equals one carrot n b i g l a underscore k cos k x plus b underscore k sin k x big r f x bigger carrot two d x equals zero for suitable real or complex coefficients act b k but many square integrable functions cannot be represented as finite linear combinations of these basis functions, which therefore do not comprise a Hamel basis. Every Hamel basis of this space is much bigger than this merely countably infinite set of functions. Hamel bases of spaces of this kind are typically not useful, whereas orthonormal bases of these spaces are essential in Fourier analysis. Geometry. <laughs> The geometric notions of an affine space, projective space, convex set, and cone have related notions of basis. An affine basis for an n-dimensional affine space is n plus 1 display style n plus 1 points in general linear position. A projective basis is n plus 2 display style n plus 2 points in general position, in a projective space of dimension n. A convex basis of a polytope is the set of the vertices of its convex hull. A cone basis consists of one point by edge of a polygonal cone. See also a Hilbert basis linear programming. Topic random basis for a probability distribution in Rn with a probability density function, such as the equidistribution in a n-dimensional ball with respect to Lebesgue measure, it can be shown that n randomly and independently chosen vectors will form a basis with probability 1, which is due to the fact that n linearly dependent vectors x1, xn in Rn should satisfy the equation that x1, xn equals 0, 0 determinant of the matrix with columns xi, and the set of zeros of a non-trivial polynomial polynomial has zero measure. This observation has led to techniques for approximating random bases. It is difficult to check numerically the linear dependence or exact orthogonality. Therefore, the notion of epsilon orthogonality is used. For spaces with inner product, x is epsilon orthogonal to y if x, y, x, y, e display style, langle x, y, wrangle, x, y, that is, cosine of the angle between x and y is less than epsilon. In high dimensions, two independent random vectors are with high probability almost orthogonal, and the number of independent random vectors, which all are with given high probability pairwise almost orthogonal, grows exponentially with dimension. More precisely, consider equidistribution in n-dimensional ball. Choose n independent random vectors from a ball they are independent and identically distributed. Let theta be a small positive number. 
Then for n random vectors are all pairwise epsilon orthogonal with probability 1 minus theta. This n growth exponentially with dimension n and n n display style n g g n for sufficiently big n. This property of random bases is a manifestation of the so-called measure concentration phenomenon. The figure right illustrates distribution of lengths n of pairwise almost orthogonal chains of vectors that are independently randomly sampled from the n-dimensional cube -1 1 n as a function of dimension n. A point is first randomly selected in the cube. The second point is randomly chosen in the same cube. If the angle between the vectors was within pi, 2 plus or minus 0.037 pi, 2 then the vector was retained. At the next step a new vector is generated in the same hypercube, and its angles with the previously generated vectors are evaluated. If these angles are within pi, 2 plus or minus 0.037 pi, 2 then the vector is retained. The process is repeated until the chain of almost orthogonality breaks, and the number of such pairwise almost orthogonal vectors length of the chain is recorded. For each n, 20 pairwise almost orthogonal chains were constructed numerically for each dimension. Distribution of the length of these chains is presented. <laughs> Proof that every vector space has a basis Let V be any vector space over some field F. Let X be the set of all linearly independent subsets of V. The set X is non-empty since the empty set is an independent subset of V. And it is partially ordered by inclusion, which is denoted, as usual, by Let Y be a subset of X that is totally ordered by And let Li be the union of all the elements of Y which are themselves certain subsets of V. Since y is totally ordered, every finite subset of Li is a subset of an element of y, which is a linearly independent subset of V, and hence every finite subset of Li is linearly independent. Thus Li is linearly independent, so Li is an element of x. Therefore, Li is an upper bound for y in x. It is an element of x, that contains every element y, as x is non-empty, and every totally ordered subset of x, has an upper bound in x, Zorn's lemma asserts that x has a maximal element. In other words, there exists some element L max of x satisfying the condition that whenever L max L for some element L of x, then L equals L max. It remains to prove that L max is a basis of V since L max belongs to x, we already know that L max is a linearly independent subset of V. If L max would not span V, there would exist some vector W of V that cannot be expressed as a linear combination of elements of L max with coefficients in the field F. In particular, W cannot be an element of L max. Let L W equals L max W. This set is an element of X, that is, it is a linearly independent subset of V because W is not in the span of L max, and L max is independent. As L max L W, and L max does not equal L W because L W contains the vector W that is not contained in L max, this contradicts the maximality of L max. Thus this shows that L max spans V. Hence L max is linearly independent and spans V it is thus a basis of V, and this proves that every vector space has a basis. This proof relies on Zorn's lemma, which is equivalent to the axiom of choice. Conversely, it may be proved that if every vector space has a basis, then the axiom of choice is true, thus the two assertions are equivalent. See also Change of basis Frame of a vector space Spherical basis Notes <laughs>